Hello everybody and welcome to our video podcast of Maritime Innovations. Today I'm presenting you a 2026 outlook from a Maritime Innovations perspective. Picture this. Right now as you're listening, over half of the global fleet is older than 15 years. Machinery failures, up to 10% last year. And in just six days, January 12th, every vessel touching a US port faces a hard cybersecurity deadline that could lock you out of the world's biggest market. I'm Joachim Rosnegger, publisher of MaritimeInnovations.com, where we cut through the hype and deliver what actually matters for global shipping. Today, why 2026 isn't just another year of waiting for the future? This is a year of important decisions. We're diving into seven realities that are reshaping maritime right now. An aging fleet at a breaking point, cybersecurity rules that go live this month, wind propulsion going mainstream, autonomy getting its rulebook and China's nuclear wildcard, and the digital tools keeping old ships competitive. This isn't speculation. This is uh, what the data from Allianz, UNCTAD, DNV, IMO and the US Coast Guard are screaming at us. Let's get into it. So, foundation first. Where does the global fleet actually stand? Here are the numbers that should wake you up. 12.6 years. That's the weighted average age of the world's fleet in 2024. The highest we've seen in decades. Tankers, over 14 years old in, on average. Not talking about the shadow fleet. But age is just a number, right? <laughs> not when you look at what's breaking. The Allianz Safety Review uh, counted over 3,300 shipping incidents in 2024. That's nine incidents every single day. And here's the kicker. 56% were machinery damage. Over 1,860 cases of uh, engines, generators, steering systems just failing. Why? Because owners have been extending asset lives. Strong freight rates made it profitable. Low scrap prices made recycling unattractive. So ships kept sailing. But here's the problem. That strategy worked in 2023, maybe 24 and 5. In 2026, you're gambling with C2 ratings, unplanned downtimes and P&I claims. The ships that dominated the 2010s boom, bulk carriers, tankers, even container vessels, are now 15, 16, 17 years old. They weren't designed for today's emissions regulation. They weren't built with cybersecurity in mind. And they are running on maintenance budgets stretched very thin. So what's the fix? Predictive analytics, life cycle optimization, digital twins that tell you before the bearing fails, not after. In 2026, this isn't a competitive advantage anymore. I think it's survival. Now let's talk about something that should be making CFOs very nervous. January 12th, 2026, that's six days from now. And on that date, the US Coast Guard cybersecurity mandate under 33 CFR 101.650 becomes enforceable. What does it mean? So every person with access to IT or operational technology on a US flagged vessel or any MTSA facility must have mandatory cybersecurity training. No exceptions. And the US Coast Guard isn't playing around. They've set up a dedicated maritime cyber readiness branch. 24-7 oversight. If you're non-compliant, you risk uh, port state control detentions, denied access to US ports, even civil penalties. Why the urgency? Because maritime cyber threats aren't theoretical anymore. AI spoofing, where attackers fake vessel positions, it's now routine in conflict zones. We've just seen this in Venezuela the other day. GNSS jamming disrupts navigation, ransomware hits major terminals. And most vessels still running Windows XP in the engine rooms? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> The full compliance rollout, cybersecurity plans, designated offices, vulnerability assessments. That phases in through 2027. But the training requirements that hits this month. And here's the reality. While the world argues about fuel EU maritime, C2 ratings and fuel choices, cybersecurity is the regulation that can actually shut you down tomorrow. If you're still treating this as an IT problem, not as an operational one, 2026 is going to be painful. All right, let's shift gears, because not everything in 2026 is a crisis. Uh, I hope not. Wind assisted propulsion, rotor sails, suction sails, wind sails, kites, it's finally breaking through. The International Windship Association and DNV tracked the numbers. Over 60 large vessels have wind systems installed today. 
by the end of 2026, over 100 more systems will be delivered. And these are in toys. Validated case studies show 5 to 20% fuel savings on retrofits. Real numbers, not projections. New ISO standards are formalizing performance measurement, so you can actually compare the systems. Why now? Three reasons. One, fuel EU maritime is live. C2 penalties are biting. Wind gives you immediate compliance without betting on fuel availability. Two, it's retrofitable. You don't need a new build. Yards in Europe, Asia, even the US are installing rotor sails in dry dock windows. Three, the economics work. Payback periods are hitting three to five years with current fuel prices. And if bunker costs spike again, even faster. Compare that to LNG, methanol, ammonia, all waiting on bunkering infrastructure that's still patchy at best. And wind is here. It's deployable. And in 2026, we're seeing the tipping point from early adopters to mainstream fleet planning. Now, let's talk about the longer game. Autonomous shipping. For years, the Maritime Autonomy Surface Ships, or MASS, debate has been stuck in the what-if territory. Trials in Norway, Japan, Singapore, impressive tech. I've seen it myself in Singapore and was super impressed. But no clear regulatory path. That changes in May 2026. The IMO is set to adopt the MASS code, the first international framework for autonomous and remotely operated vessels. No, it's non-mandatory. It's a guidance document, but it's critical. Why? Because it sets the baseline for testing, certification, and eventually mandatory rules. Think of it like the Polar Code in 2015. Voluntary at first, mandatory later, the MASS code lets uh, flag states, classification societies and operators start building real-world experience under a common framework. What does this mean for 2026? Expect more trials, more remote operation centers, more partial autonomy, think autopilot modes, remote troubleshooting, unmanned engine rules. Full autonomous cargo ships crossing oceans? Nah, nah. Still years away, if at all. But the regulatory scaffolding is going up now. And the operators who start testing, who build the safety cases, the operational protocols, they'll have a massive lead when mandatory rules drop around 2030, something around that. But now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Nuclear propulsion. Most people hear nuclear shipping and think it's sci-fi. But China's Yangnian shipyard is building something very real a 14,000 TEU container powered uh, by a thorium molten salt reactor, 200 megawatts of thermal output, and they are targeting design completion this year in 2026. Let's be clear, this isn't launching at 2026. Commercial deployment isn't likely beyond uh, 2030, but regulatory approval alone will take years. Now here's why it matters. Thorium reactors offer passive safety. If power is lost, the fuel solidifies, no churnable scenario, no meltdown risk. And you can run for years, potentially decades, without refueling. I mean, compare that to uh, the scaling challenges of green ammonia, methanol, hydrogen, massive infrastructure investments, energy intensive production, fuel availability bottlenecks. Thorium doesn't solve everything. There are huge questions around crew training, port acceptance, insurance, proliferation concerns. But if China proves the concept, it fundamentally changed the decarbonization conversation. 2026 is the year we see if thorium stays a concept or becomes a contender. All right, back to the here and now. Uh, because while we wait for the future fuels and nuclear propulsion, operators need solutions today. Enter the digital shipyards and the additive manufacturing. Over 70% of shipyards adopting digital twins report major efficiency gains. They are simulating repairs before cutting steel, they are optimizing retrofit schedules, they are reducing dry dock time. And additive manufacturing, 3D printing for maritime components, it's cutting lead times by up to 95%. That's obsolete value on a 20 years old engine. Instead of waiting six months for a supplier to maybe have it in stock, you print it on site. This is how you extend uh, asset life cycles without compromising safety. Predictive maintenance catches failures early, data twins optimize performance, and on-demand manufacturing eliminates supply chain bottlenecks. These aren't moonshots. They are happening now in yards across Europe, Asia, and the US. And they are the difference between an aging vessel being a liability or remaining competitive for another five to 10 years. So let's bring it home. 
2026 is the point of no return, I guess, because the decisions you make today, this year, they look in your trajectory for the decade ahead. Do you invest in wind propulsion now while retrofit slots are available? Or you wait until C2 penalties force your hand and yards are booked two years out? Do you treat cybersecurity as a compliance checkbox or as a fundamental operational risk? Do you leverage digital tools to squeeze more life from agent assets or keep running on reactive maintenance until something critical fails? The data from Alliance, uh, UNC, TAD, AMO, DNV and the Coast Guard, it all points in the same direction. Adaption over aspiration. The future fuels, they will come. Autonomous shipping will scale. Nuclear might even break through. But in 2026, the winners are the pragmatists. The operators who deploy proven retrofits, who build robust digital defenses, who extend asset lives intelligently. The horizon is demanding, but it's navigable. And the question is, are you positioned to lead or are you hoping to catch up later? This has been Maritime 2026, our outlook, the point of no return. I'm Joachim Rosenegger. For in-depth analysis, data breakthroughs, and actionable intelligence on the technologies shaping global shipping, head to maritimeinnovations.com. Sign up for our newsletter, and you'll get the insights that keep you ahead. Thank you very much for listening. And remember, in 2026, waiting is a strategy, just not a winning one. Thank you so much for your time today.